get introduced as a scientist. But actually, I kind of like to think of myself as a detective, because as a geologist, I'm like a detective of the Earth. I get to uncover all the puzzles and the stories in the past by looking at what's preserved in the rock record. And it turns out that the history of the Earth is fascinating. It's filled with stories of dinosaurs and asteroids and ice ages. Sometimes it feels a bit like another world. I study sea level change by looking at fossil coral reefs that grew near the sea surface. And you may have heard a lot about sea level rise, but today I'd like to share with you my perspective as a geologist on what's happening today and how that will play out in the future. But before we get there, I've got a confession to make first. There is something even more important than the science that I want to talk to you about today. Because I'm also a person. I'm a resident in the state of Florida. I'm a mother, a sister, a daughter, and I care about the people in my life, just as I'm sure you care about the people in yours. And because of that, we are not as divided on this issue of sea level rise as our politics might suggest. It is time to reframe this conversation and to move away from the rehashing the fundamental science of sea level rise and to move towards a discussion of what we're going to do about it. Because this is actually now more of a social problem than it is a scientific one. And we need to reach a social acceptance of the idea that our coastlines are going to be on the move, not just for the next few decades, but for centuries and even thousands of years into the future, just based on the amount of warming we've already seen. And that is going to be our new normal. So the reason I came here today, and I'm standing before you on this red dot, is not to save the planet. And that might be surprising coming from a geologist, but as a geologist, I can tell you that planet Earth has been here an awfully long time. And it's going to survive this one. I'm here today to save human lives. And that's something that we can do together. So what you need to know to save lives is this. The seas are rising, and that is not an alternative fact. And when you see this number of three millimeters a year, it might not sound very impressive to you. And you know what? I'd have to agree to, with you, because three millimeters is the thickness of two pennies stacked on top of each other. So there are probably people snickering at me up in the back of the audience, thinking, three millimeters, really? This woman's crazy. I mean, my beach house is good, right? We've got this. Well. Unfortunately for all of us, three millimeters a year is higher than anything the Earth has seen in at least the last few thousand years while we've been busily building away on our coastlines. And it pales in comparison for what's to come. But unlike those past worlds of Earth history that I spoke about earlier, we don't have to imagine what three millimeters a year looks like because we're already seeing the effects all around us, just as you can see in this newspaper headline because the flooding of our coastlines has already begun. And I've been out there on the front lines, and I've seen what's happening. And salt water is filling up the streets, even on a sunny day during a normal high tide. And when I go into these coastal communities to talk to them about sea level rise, I don't have to try to convince them that sea level rise is a problem, because they're already dealing with the consequences of it. In some cases, they're grappling with reduced freshwater supplies as the saltwater intrudes into the aquifers underground. Above ground, they may be unable to drive to work on a regular basis, or um, they uh, may be wading through water that's filled with sewage and contamination just to cross the street. I'm completely on the wrong side. All right, sorry. Um, here we go, crossing the street, sewage and contamination. And as the sea gradually inches upwards, this type of coastal flooding will occur more and more often. Because it's not going to be like a storm surge that goes away after a few days. Sea level rise is going to be here to stay. And given what I have learned through my research on ice sheets in the past, we are certain that sea level is going to rise in the future. 
In fact, you may not want to know this, but my work shows that we may already be committed to a minimum of six meters of sea level rise. That's nearly 20 feet. And this is what that will do to my home state of Florida. Now, that's not going to happen overnight, but what that means is that this sea level rise is just the very first step in what is going to be a long journey into the future. So, all right, we've established that the seas are rising, and you can either look at graphs like this, or you can look at all the visual and anecdotal evidence around us. But the surprising part of the story is that sea level rise will probably not play out the way you think it will. Why? Because your imaginations have been pre-programmed by the things that you see and hear about sea level rise. And there are several problems with the way that this has typically been done. The first of those, and probably the most common, is that sea level rise is routinely overly dramatized. As you can see here with this picture of the Statue of Liberty up to her armpits in water. Now, I once saw this photo accompanied by the headline, New York to see six feet of sea level rise. <laughs> Clearly, this is more than six feet. Or this is more than 200 feet. So what happens here is that people completely tune out, and they think either we have no idea what we're talking about, or that this is such a big problem that there's nothing that we can do about it. The other problem with the way that future sea level rise is often portrayed is that it is overly romanticized. And now, I hate to break it to you, but sea level rise is not going to be like a romantic trip to Venice. <laughs> and in fact, sea level rise will probably look more like this. Or not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and when the storm surge comes along, riding on top of the accumulated sea level rise of the last century, the effects will be positively devastating. So the problem with having this alternative, kind of overly romanticized narrative of what's going to happen is that we get distracted from the potentially more ugly reality of the fact that sea level rise is going to potentially cripple our ports and also our coastal airports that are largely built on landfill and also our energy facilities that line the coastlines. So in essence, the delivery of food, water, and energy, the fundamental things that we rely on as a society to survive, will be threatened for all of us. The third problem with the way that sea level rise is often portrayed is that we have this unrealistic belief that we can just engineer our way out of the situation, right? We can build walls, we can raise roads, we can install pumps. All right, now don't get me wrong, there is no question that there is an important place for engineering solutions that can buy us some time. But large-scale projects, quite simply, are not going to be a realistic solution for most communities. And in the short term, we may be able to hold the seas at bay in some places. But when those big storms come along, that infrastructure will fail, catastrophically. So in the long run, there are really only two choices to make. Either we can build walls and live in bowls, or we can retreat. And the problem is that to a lot of people, the word retreat sounds a lot like the word defeat. So now we get to the heart of the matter, because the seas are rising, and now we have some difficult choices to make. On the one hand, we can choose to manage that retreat to some extent, or we can wait, stick our heads in the sand, and then respond to the crisis as the storms hit the insurance companies pull out and then prevent us from rebuilding in those vulnerable areas. And unfortunately, if we ignore that problem, it won't go away. Because the certainty we have, uh, or because, sorry, the ice sheets don't really care what you think about sea level rise. They only care about the temperatures that are making them melt. And this certainty that we have about the fact that sea level is going to rise in the future often gets lost in what you hear in the news, which tends to focus on the uncertainty of how quickly that's going to play out. And by focusing only on the near term of what's going to happen in the next few decades, 
we tend to lean towards solutions of infrastructure development to preserve the existing coastlines. My point is that we also need to have a long-term perspective here, because at some point, retreat is going to be inevitable, and redefining our relationship to the coastline is going to take time. So, why aren't we having more conversations about retreat? Well, quite simply, there's a decisive lack of social and political will to do so. Even in the communities where they've organized and they're addressing the issue of sea level rise, people are still afraid to even mention the word retreat, much less have a discussion about it. Why is that? My intuition tells me that it's based in fear. Fear about losing what we have. Fear about losing our homes, the places we grew up in. Fear about what happens next? Where will I go? How will I afford to go? But if we continue to insist on building in these vulnerable coastlines, then we are losing out on an opportunity to relocate people, move to higher ground, and develop along corridors of retreat. With that opportunity would come jobs, economic growth, and most importantly to me, saving lives. So, in fact, retreat is not defeat. Retreat is winning because the alternative would be far costlier outcome. So my message to you today is that it is time for us to face our fears about sea level rise, because the fact that we can't even have a discussion about this issue is a real problem, because there can't be action unless we talk about it first. So if you want to know what you can do as just one person, it's to go out there and to talk to people about the problems we face. Have the hard conversations about imagining what the future will bring. But I'd like to remind you today that there has never been anything false about hope. And because you now have this perspective on sea level rise, I have hope in you and in what we can do together. So I challenge you today to get up, to go out there, put down your smartphones and talk to each other. Because we have a challenge before us. And if we can have more realistic dialogue about this issue, not the drama and romance you saw before, we can actually save lives, possibly even your own. Because yes, the seas are rising, but so can we. Thank you.